Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we are looking at Silverstone's Argon AR01 CPU cooler, which is priced firmly in the $35 range, right near the Hyper 212 and Respire T40. And both of those we've reviewed previously, check the channel for those. As always, let's hit on the hard specs before jumping into opinions and thermal data. You'll find the full review linked below, complete with all the benchmark data and images I'm about to discuss. First of all, Silverstone's Argon series of coolers ships in three SKUs, AR01, AR02, and AR03. We tested the AR01 Argon cooler, and uh, these coolers are each purpose-built for different socket types, though they're all intercompatible. The CPU size, of course, the actual physical size of the CPU fluctuates with the pin count, which is signified by the socket numbers, so 1155, 1150, 2011, and so on. And generally, it's advisable to seek out a CPU cooler that fits perfectly atop the integrated heat spreader on the CPU, or IHS. If you buy a massive cooler that's meant for server procs or X-Class CPUs and mount it to a Haswell chip, then it'll still work, it's just going to be inefficient and price ineffective. Neither of those are desirable. The same is true for the reverse, mounting a Respire T20, which has one of the smallest cold plates I've ever seen, to a massive LGA 2011 chip, is going to run pretty warm, so uh, for the same reason you don't want to do that. By seeding the heat pipes, the copper heat pipes, more directly atop the IHS, we can conduct heat more efficiently from the IHS into the capillaries, and this is partly because, uh, first of all, copper has about two times the thermal conductivity of aluminum, so that's a big part of it, and then, of course, uh, the heat pipes themselves will be more effective at their jobs. Like many modern heat sinks, the Argon coolers use direct contact cold plates with smooth mounting surfaces, so there aren't any cracks between the heat pipes and aluminum base plate, as found in some cheaper coolers. And this helps with thermal dissipation efficiency by maximizing the contact to the IHS and minimizing the demand for a thermal interface, i.e. compound, to fill the cracks. The AR01 is recommended for CPUs with a similar pin count to Ivy Bridge's 1155 pins, including Haswell's LGA 1150 socket. So if you're running 1150, 1155, generally 115X, you want the AR01. If you're running 1366 or 2011, which are much larger, you want AR03. And then I believe the AR02 cooler is a little bit smaller form factor uh, for those special instances where you need it. And uh, the AR01 itself is built with three 8mm copper heat pipes and a large copper heat sink. The aluminum heat sink has a fin design that increases air turbulence to prohibit intake air from escaping too early in the dissipation process. So the, the retention of that colder air is much better with this cooler than others. You'll find positioning available for two fans on this CPU cooler, each mounted with a rubber tab rather than plastic sliders that break. <laughs> and our testing has found that the Airstream was fully saturated by just the stock fan, at least in the instance of our bench. So uh, the stock fan does use a high pro bearing and delivers roughly 55 CFM at 24 decibels, making for a relatively low overall noise threshold and moderate power. Let's hit those benchmarks. You'll find our full test methodology in the article linked below, but the short of it is that we run Prime95 instances with LFFTs on four threads to generate maximum heat and load, and the CPU is OC'd to 4.4 gigahertz with a V-core of roughly 1.75 volts. RAM is up around 2400 megahertz. We disable all automatic fan speed controls for the purposes of these tests, and I ran the AR01 through with both stock and aftermarket controlled thermal compounds, so uh, this helps to set all the coolers on a similar baseline so we can judge their actual design, and also judge if you need to buy your own compound. Then I tested it again with the dual fan configuration, and uh, and we'll talk about those uh, settings in a second. So here's the stock chart, as shown in this chart. The AR01 performs nearly on par with the NZXT Kraken X40 CLC and easily beats out all other air coolers on the bench, including the Hyper 212 Plus and Respire T40, which are priced similarly. The air coolers aren't that surprising in terms of what it beats, but the CLC probably sees similar performance 
uh, on the silent setting anyway due to the efficiency of our test setup. If you were to OV to 1.3 volts and run a, I don't know, 4.8 gigahertz clock or higher, you'd probably see a bigger gap developing between liquid and air, and I would assume with the X40 retaining more of its uh, advantage there. Still, our bench is purpose-built for real-world test scenarios, and this means intermediate system builders are in mind. You're not uh, an insane overclocker if you're using this type of setup. So if you're mirroring our target bench, the AR01 is easily the best buy at its price on our entire bench suite. And if you don't need liquid for any particular reason, then this generally is advisable over most liquid just for the cost benefit. The differences between the stock and aftermarket compound tests are within one Celsius, and because the stock compound is already 5 watts per meter Kelvin, there's really no reason to opt for aftermarket cooling uh, paste, rather, unless you go for more extreme overclocking, uh, maybe something like diamond compound would be preferable for that. As for multi-fan tests, we found the improvement was within margin of error, only 1C, and this is likely due to the Airstream being fully saturated as is on the bench, as I discussed. Overall, the build quality of the AR01 is superb, the price point is excellent, and it has effectively dethroned the Respire T40, which previously dethroned the Hyper 212, as our highest recommended air cooler. If you're trying to buy a cooler in the $30 price range, plus or minus 10 bucks, the AR01 is definitely what I'd recommend. That said, you can normally grab the Respire T40 for just under $20 lately, which makes its value significantly better if you need budget-friendly parts. Uh, really, you can't go wrong with either cooler, though. And that's all for now. I will see you all next time. Peace.